Hey everyone, don't get anxious, get prepared. You're a career engineer right here. And today we are going to be talking about five ways to deal with shutdowns, layoffs, job loss, business loss, losing money, being let go, whatever we call it. So uh, get your pens, get your paper, do all that stuff, share this with your friends. And we're going to be right back diving into this very important conversation. <music> Yeah. we. Hey, I don't take long to do what I got to do. So listen again, don't get anxious, get prepared. Thank you so much for being here. This broadcast is being made possible by The Career Engineer and find us at tcenow.com, tcenow.com. Make sure you subscribe, hit the alert, do whatever you got to do to make sure you get new content from us all the time. Questions or comments about this broadcast or a career question you may have, or an entrepreneurial question, send it to me at info at tcenow.com. We are happy to answer them. And you never know, your question might be selected for a podcast, a blog post, a TV interview, something, because I am sure it will be a very good question. I mean, this is why we're having this conversation today. Someone got laid off and was really feeling some kind of way because it was a sudden shock, but it was in the, it was, the writing was on the wall. So I want to teach folks how to read the writing before the layoff notice. So here we go. Five ways to deal with it. First things I have to say, this is very important. I need people to have their eyes open, mouth closed, listen and act. And what do I mean by that? I want everyone to know as much as I know there's different um, generations in the workforce today. And some of you like office politics. Some of you despise it. I'm not, I ain't got a dog in the fight, but I got to tell you what, it matters. You have got to pay attention to the politics in your, in your office, in your department, at your company, at the level above that, at the corporate HQ to find out how policy is going to impact your pocket and your pocketbook. It matters. You got to learn the game, know who the players are. I mean, maybe you're a player in the game, but pay attention to the virtual and the, um, traditional water cooler if you're in the office a couple days a week. Pay attention to how national policy or certain types of policy will affect your livelihood. You got to pay attention to this. So learn about it, get with it. Don't be afraid of it because when you're ignorant of that, that's when things can happen. When I'm talking about policy, I, I mean stuff like, you know, I'm talking about stuff like you know, economic policy and financial policy and technology policy and those type of things and innovation and things because it can affect what you do every day. Number two, and this is something you have control over. Look at your household, get your, get your money straight. I mean, what's your financial position right now? If some, you hearing some rumors at the water cooler, if it happened, how much you got in the bank or wherever you keep your money in the mattress, whatever you do in the cookie jar, you've got to access where you are and you're going to have to make some tough decisions on where to cut some things. But don't cut corners. When I say cut corners, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, like throw the bathwater out, but not the baby. So don't take away something that can help you be sustainable. But you may have to trim some fat. And when I mean trim some fat, the stuff that ain't working, ain't no muscle in it. It's not helping you to get where you have to go. And it may not be a permanent solution. It might be just a temporary solution, but you've got to know where you are realistically with your money. And the IDK world of how much is in the bank, I don't know. How much money do you have in reserves? I don't know. That don't work. Particularly when you hear rumors and more rumors that there may be some changes in fourth quarter. So I think everyone should have six months of income in the bank. Sure you should. Hey, if you got a year, go for it. But the reality is most folks are $400 away from being broke. Don't let that be you. So get that house in order. And, you know, Netflix and all that may have to go for a little bit until you get some things going on and Starbucks. Get you a Keurig machine and save some money that way. Number three, if it's broken, fix it, right? If it's broken, fix it. Don't wait to need something and it ain't working for you. So here's what I want you to fix that might be broke. I'm trying to get my thing up here. Um, what I want you to look at that needs to be fixed are things like check out your, you know, if, if you're hearing things at the water cooler, virtual or traditional, what's that resume look like? What are your profiles looking like? What is your cover letter? Yeah. People are asking for cover letters again. Mm -hmm. Old school thing, but 
it's something that's happening. So get that and if you know, make sure it's right. But look at what your whatever new skills or gifts or talents or new things you've contributed. Is that updated in your profiles and your resumes or how people network with you? You want to get that stuff straight. Don't wait till you get a cutoff notice or, or let go notice or lack of work notice. Have these things in a state of readiness. So if you need them, they're ready. So if they're broke, fix them now not when you need them. All right. Um, number four is, you know, that again, some of this might folks say is common sense, but I know a lot of folks that have all their eggs in one basket and I've never been a fan of any, all eggs in one basket. You've got different gifts and talents. Why not use them in different settings? So a B and C game doesn't necessarily mean they're less than A. I mean, A is great. Go for your, go for your A, but Find other places where you can also generate um, it, revenue with the skills and abilities that you have. Other scenarios, right? So just in case A and B, I mean, A is not where it needs to be or A is having some drama. Well, you know, you've got a B and C. And there's going to be sometimes, sometimes in this world with the way the world is today, the climate of the economy today, no matter when you're watching this, you may have to have a D game. <laughs> Just in case A, B, and C ain't working and swallow that pride. I mean, swallow that pride. I, I've had to work this at in different industries that were below my station. I mean, I'm looking at going back, back. And if I had to do it again, why? Because the bills need to be paid. Food need to be in the pantry. Okay. Fuel need to be in the car and I can't get on the internet if I don't pay the power bill. Okay. So keep it real. Keep it realistic. There's some things you do. I, I remember full disclosure. I had to do telemarketing once many, many, many moons ago, but Hey, I had my eyes on the prize. I wanted to buy this house. I was a young chick under 30. I want to buy this house. And if I needed to do that little bit of thing <laughs> to get me to where I got to go, I did what I had to do. Let me tell you what I learned from it though. You talk about some tough skin. Boy, did I get tough skin after being rejected and hung up on and being told all kinds of stuff, right? But it taught me too how to sell. It taught me about the value of using the phone. It taught me actually some voice work, how to control my voice and how to read a script and things I'm kind of doing today. See, you can learn something from your B, C, and D game. So swallow that pride and keep your eyes on the prize. And here's some options for those of you who have lots of, you know, con you've contributed in incredibly in, in the workforce, right? Consider teaching, adjunct teaching in a university. Check with your community colleges or your four-year institutions. I teach, actually, I'm, I'm a adjunct <laughs> professor myself. Someone asked, I said, hmm, might be fun. And it is. It's a nice shift or change um, for things. Of course, I'm talking about things that help people get into the profession that I'm a part of. So it's pretty cool. Home-based businesses. If you have a hobby that folks have loved, I mean, maybe put some dollars behind that thing. Think about a little entrepreneurial thing. And also you can always outsource your skills with what we have today at the global economy between you just having a different profile and some of these great gig economy type places, someone might want to pay you 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or a hundred dollars an hour for something that you can do that they need. Think about it. Always have that just in case you have things going on. Networking for real, for real guys, not for fake, like really networking. Um, up that a lot of people will get hired or get that loaded contract, which is wonderful. I love those things. Those are great days. But then they stop networking. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen people do is this. They're not, they get hired and they, I don't need to network anymore. I've got this great job, but this great money and this great office. And I get to work from all this stuff and you stop connecting and collaborating with people. And then you get a little notice, by, by the way, yeah, you love us. We love you, but ooh, HR or corporate just made some decisions and we got to cut the, we got to cut some things. We love you, but you got to go. All right. And then what do you do? Then you go to your network and while you're anxious versus going to your network, being prepared. That's a whole total different thing. So I think you should always remain in networking. Even if you love the job and you love it and it's great, it may or may not love you anymore because things happen. Things change. Find those places, vetted or boutique or large scale, whatever, where you're getting real relationships. We talked about what TCE relationships are before access and opportunity. And the worst thing you can do with your networking, if you're going to be a networker for real, is always run to them when you're upside down and out of order. That They get tired of that. 
folks get that's not networking that's something else so build relationships build bridges be collaborative, help your network along the way as well, so that when you're ready for it, you know, they're there for you. So I believe build your network before you need it. But again, the main words are relationship, access, and opportunity. That's where you need to go. Okay. Those are the things. Actually, my number five would be like this, this one, because I tell you, if you do networking and build relationships the way you're supposed to, you will always have access to some great options. It's when you don't that you have that upside down feeling. So listen, I thank you so much for, for being here. We'll see you next month here on our YouTube channel or whichever platform you're enjoying us on because we're on different places for that very reason about collaborating and making sure you're uh, working your network. Uh, as shared before, visit us anywhere Anytime, any day, 24-7, tcenow.com, tcenow.com. And we're also real excited. I should have said this earlier, but get your copy of our book, A Mind to Work. It's in its third edition. This is a game changer. Uh, we're so excited about it. And, you know, we even have, like, when people order it from me, we even have our little Mind to Work uh, uh, marks. But, yeah, you can order it at Amazon on our shop, Amazon, Francina Harrison. But order.tcenow.com or just come right there to that website sitting right there and you can get your book. Yeah. A mind to work 3.0. So listen, you guys be blessed. Thank you so much for being here with me. And um, I want you to remember to don't get anxious to always, always be prepared. God bless. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching our Korean Video Show. I hope you learned a lot about today's topic. If you enjoyed the show, please let me know by visiting our website, tcenow.com, and sending me an email. I'd love to hear from you.